Hello, everyone, and welcome to JFG tonight. Our friend Coach Red Pill has died. Uh, it is amazingly, it's shocking to to see people die. People that I consider horizontally to me, you know, not people of the last generation, but people who have been friends, people who I've risen on the, the internet as a celebrity alongside with. Uh, it's fascinating to see them die, and it's, it's fascinating how shocking it is to to think of someone uh, who is your peer, uh, who has been a guest on this show, who has in fact called me just before he got arrested in Ukraine. He wanted to talk to me in private, and who I still I still uh, have my sample of the Wilshire Boulevard, the the fic fiction uh, novel that was written by Coach Red Pill and that was never released. And now I have a big weight on my mind, which is, should I release the Wilshire Boulevard? <laughs> How does that work? Is one person entitled to die with the information that they chose not to release? Or can I take the circumstances of his death as justifying the release of the novel. In any case, I am the sole owner of an of an exemplar of the Wilshire Boulevard, a a novel that was written by Coach Red Pill at some point in his life, where he had called me and he had said, uh, "Jeff, I'm looking for a big change. I'm looking for a big change in my life." He had been streaming. He had been very popular as Coach Red Pill. <clears throat> and he was saying, uh, uh, John Selmer says you would have to get clearance from his family. Papa Jeff does not get clearance from anyone. Papa Jeff, Papa Jeff releases on the blockchain. <laughs> Papa Jeff releases in ways that you don't even know it would be me. Uh, no, but uh, seriously. He was uh, wishing for a change, and I've known him through various waves of his e-celebrity from the very beginning. I've known Coach Red Pill from streams where there were 10 viewers, and we were hanging out on these streams. Uh, so that's how far it goes between me and Gonzalo Lira. Uh, I've seen him through various eras, the blood sports era, and amazingly, Coach Red Pill, as an old man, really, of, uh, of the internet, has always been performing extremely well. He has been outcompeting many big YouTubers and has been bringing uh, very actual and very current coverage that has surpassed in quality what many other streamers are capable of producing. And in this final... Uh, demonstration, a fantastic demonstration of his life. He has put himself in the front line of a war and, uh, in my view, has seek to make a case with his death. And so we'll talk about the career of Coach Red Pill tonight. Rest in peace, Coach Red Pill, a.k.a. Gonzalo Lira. He lived to the fullest extent and took the greatest of risks to get Ukrainian pussy as I often say, the only problem with the Ukrainian woman is her gangster male cousin. CRP died for the sins of the American military industrial complex. We have a handwritten note from Coach Red Pill as he was dying. A handwritten note to his sister. We have his father having confirmed his death on Tucker Carlson. And we have Tucker Carlson confirming... That he is dead. The last uh, pinned tweet of Gonzalo Lira still stands as he was starting to get silenced by the Ukrainian regime. He says, for the truth about the Zelensky regime, Google these names. Vladimir Struck, Denis Kiriv, Mikhail and Alexander Kononovich, Nestor Shufrich, Jan Taxier, Dmitry Jangirov, Elena Bereznaya. Once again, if you haven't heard from me in 12 hours or more, put my name on this list. Those are all people who have been killed by the Ukrainian corrupt regime. 
And now Gonzalo Lira stands, <coughs> stands as another person who got killed under the care of the Ukrainian regime. Shamrock Sheikh says, do they know how he died? Uh, it seems that Coach Red Pill had a major pulmonary problem with inflammation and edema, and uh, he wasn't taken care of properly. The staff of the prison denied that he had any problem, and they let him basically die from a pneumonia, from, from a medical thing that, if it had been indulged, could have been indulged properly, and he could have still lived. Um, we have the words of Coach Red Pill here on death. Let's see what he had to say. You should do something like a little thought experiment. A thought experiment that I'm realizing is extremely useful. Imagine to yourself that you are going to absolutely die in, say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. from, from today's date, in exactly 10 years, you are going to be dead. Mm -hmm. And no illness or cancer and shit like that. You know, you're just going to be walking along and struck by lightning. And there's no place to hide, okay? Just, just uh, you know, for those autists who want to say, well, what if you're indoors or in a concrete bunker? No, you know, God or the supreme being or the aliens or whoever the fuck is just going to come down and just wipe you out. Presto, done. In 10 years from right now, you're going to be dead. Now, think about that. Think about what kind of life you'd want to live over the next 10 years. I mean, you know you're going to die, right? I, let's just, it just posit it. That absolutely true that in 10 years time, in, uh, you know, what is today's date? May 19th, in May 19th of uh, 2031, your brain is gonna explode and your heart is gonna burst and, and it'll be painless, but you know, that's it, you're dead. What do you do in the time you have left? You should. So that was the message of Coach Red Pill in this video about death. What would you do with the time you have left? And I believe that this is exactly what Coach Red Pill has been doing. So I've known Coach Red Pill from the moment he. I had a lot of guests back in the days on my show, The Public Space. And uh, he, he seemed like open to appear on the show, and he had a he had a relatively big uh, channel, smaller, I believe, than mine, or maybe slightly bigger than mine, in the same order of magnitude. And uh, I was looking at his videos, and they were all titles, like they were all like harmony or death. Or there were all a single word, and Coach Red Pill was de delivering the Red Pill basically uh, in the early history of video internet, delivering Red Pills through videos, small videos that he was editing, that he was spending a lot of time with, with different camera angles, and he had a passion for cinematography, and he would always deliver the Red Pill view on a subject and. He would have these wild uh, theories. Some of them were just valid. Some of them were just pure red pill view on life and woman. And some of them were just wild theories like Sargon knew. <laughs> and oh my God, this was leading to so many memes. And, uh, and he, we, we kind of connected on the theme of truth. He liked me because I was a truth seeker and I liked him because he was trying to get to the truth also in his own way. And that made us both truth seekers. Uh, of course, he didn't have the, the, the hardcore rationality of the hard scientist. He was more intuitive with the world and he was going on with his intuition, with his understanding, which was quite legendary and good. Uh, and I knew that deep inside, he had told me in private that his main motivation for his YouTube channel was the fact that he couldn't be in contact with his children and that he, he had been denied a life in which he couldn't make children as a young man. And so he had made children later and perhaps there was some divorce stuff or I, I didn't know exactly what was the situation? But somehow he couldn't be in full contact with his children. And most importantly, his children that he was in contact with 
were much younger than him because he made them late in life. And what he wanted is for his video contributions on the public space to stand and uh, play the role of mentoring his children after his death because he, he knew that even if he was still alive when his children are 18, 20, uh, he couldn't be there really as a young man to guide them in the modern world. But he thought that I'm going to use the last moments of my clear cognition to give a red pill view to my children, my son, and I'm going to, to let, 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 them, let this survive on the internet so that it gets carried to them in some form. Um, that, was, uh, that was the Coach Red Pill that I knew, and he was a Coach Red Pill who was, uh, he was tired of the, of the level of discussion on the internet. He found it too low, and he wanted to have more serious intellectual conversations on the state of the world and he was finding that the whole routine of oh, you know youtube atheist channels and secularist channels saying haha god doesn't exist that this was all very small and he wanted to push for a greater understanding of the world through his youtube contribution um, and he got there, and we were hanging out. We were trying to get ourselves onto big streams together, uh, trying to push this view that, hey, you know, uh, it's not all black and white. It's not the world of religion and then the world of secularism. There are all sorts of hidden liberal priors within the world of secularism that are coming to hit you if you convert to atheism, if you if you fight so hard against religion that you drop the baby with the bathwater, basically. And those were some of the early points that, that, that he wanted to push on streams, on streams in which he was participating. Uh, and that, that's basically Coach Red Pill is the reason I got to be a co-host of Warski Live, because Coach Red Pill invited me to a religious, yeah, ultra-orthodox or whatever channel and we were having the, this very low, uh, this very low audience discussion, and suddenly Andy Warski comes on this stream because back in those days, you weren't invited on streams; you just showed up, and you were connecting to the Google Hangout, and people were sharing the link uh, readily with new guests, and so Andy Warski somehow shows up out of nowhere and starts discussing with us and eventually uh, that leads us to go on to the Andy Warski show and make the point that you know there are uh, current discussions about race that were never had by society and we should have these discussions now that conversation is free now that we can basically um, and that that transition from the small stream I was talking to Andy Warski to the bigger stream we did on the Andy Warski channel eventually made me a, a useful tool in Andy Warski to expand his audience toward an intellectual alt-right type of audience. And the rest is history. We, we built this show that became a legend of the internet uh, and this is all thanks to Coach Red Pill. Coach Red Pill had this, this, uh, this slightly networking approach to him that was kind of uh, that was kind of foreign to me. But that that's how he was. Like he was all uh, Jeff. Do you need contacts? Do you want me to present you to this friend? I have a friend here, and I have this friend, and. I remember I met uh, Brittany Pettibone, uh, Brit the beautiful Brittany Pettibone. I met her in Ontario because of Coach Red Pill. Somehow Coach Red Pill talked to her in private and said, you should do an, an interview with JF. And somehow we ended up in this uh, skyscraper in, in Toronto with Andy Warski, Brittany Pettibone interviewing me. Not that it was an important interview of any sort, but it was all the, the kind of Coach Red Pill trying to be the granddad caring for JF, for the small Papa JF, and trying to push him forward. 
and, and it was like, I don't need this. I don't care about meeting Brittany Pettibone. <laughs> but Coach Red Pill would still make it happen. Um, so Coach uh, grew and grew on his Red Pill discourse, mostly on protecting modern males. And Coach was very much aware of the dangers of female leftism of the modern world because he had an experience of false allegations against him in college, which were reviewed not by a criminal court, but by these university bureaucrat courts that eventually deprived him of some opportunity. I, I think he may have been kicked out of the college for a false allegation reviewed by some committee, some bureaucratic committee. And what I didn't know then, as I knew him, was that he was also a cineast before becoming Coach Redpill. He was Gonzalo Lira, as it turns out, and this got to be discovered during the blood sports era. And Coach Redpill had already done TV appearances, including on Russia Today, <coughs> um, and had done various uh, blogs and economic commentary at the geopolitical level as Gonzalo Lira. Uh, he, was a, he was a cineast who had done some movies, and he's from, uh, he, he was originating from Chile. Um, <clears throat> so we got to know this as he got doxxed and as he started getting attacked by the mainstream media. And he continued growing and eventually just took it in his doxing and accepted and eventually made it his all true identity, Gonzalo Lira, and started tweeting as Gonzalo Lira. Um, and then uh, he continued growing, commenting on various e celebs, commenting on the state of society. And then the Ukraine war popped, and not so long before that happened, he had told me, I want a change. I want a change. And he had sent me this, uh, Kelly says he wrote a lot of books. He had sent me this exemplar of uh, Wilshire Boulevard, and he had asked me to review it in full, and I did. And I interviewed them on the subject, and I commented, there's a whole, uh, out there, there's an episode of me interviewing him and commenting on the writing. Uh, the Wilshire Boulevard story is basically a story about female incompetence. And just females in this book are messing everything up. I was reading through the book and I was hating. I was hating because I was like, why is she fucking everything up? Um, but yeah, so but but I don't remember much of the book other than this that that it's really themed around female incompetence and, and females wanting too much and messing up the situation for males. In that sense, it's very interesting writing because there's something when you read fiction novel these days, they are all they are all very f female gazed. They are all very womanly, and you know, I I can't really connect with too much of a womanly approach to storytelling, but the writing of Coach Red Pill put me in a state where I was truly sympathetic, sympathetic to to the characters that were there because they they were going through a lot because of female abuse, basically. Um, yeah, so. Uh, that, and Coach Red Pitt had told me, I'm going to change. Something's going to change in my life. And I didn't think much about this. I didn't know what it meant. But eventually we learned that he had moved to Ukraine. And he, it seems that he had moved to Ukraine to reassociate with family life. Uh, it's not clear to me, was he joining kids that he had already produced? Or was he, was he going back with an ex? Or was he going with a current wife? In any case, he had his new studio, studio in Ukraine. He wasn't in the UK anymore. And he, he wasn't saying yeah anymore. Yeah? Yeah? Because the price of Bitcoin will go to zero. Yeah? <coughs> and that's another thing he had told me then. He had told me, Jeff, I know you've been talking a lot about Bitcoin on your show. I want just to warn you. 
Bitcoin is going to zero. It's bullshit. Just sell it all. It's not going to work. Amazingly, uh, Coach Red Pill told me this with Bitcoin at 10K. Uh, and, and I had went into Bitcoin at 7K. Uh, and Coach Red Pill was telling me, Jeff, you're going to get scammed. Bitcoin is, is bullshit. It's going to go down. <laughs> and I remember... I didn't want to be moralized by Coach Red Pill because my relationship with him was a remote emotional relationship. I didn't want him to get into that private space of mine of telling me what to do with my money. And, and I, I was seeing Coach Red Pill as an old man with gray hair. And it's like, maybe you don't know, Coach. <laughs> so I remember what I said to him then. I said, by the way, coach, when I said on my show that I went all in into Bitcoin, you have to know what it is. It, it was just like it was just like three, three or four dollars. I I just put three dollars into Bitcoin, uh, like the price the price of a coffee. And he was like, oh, okay, okay, th then you're okay. Uh, I I I lied to Coach Redfield. <laughs> And I consider still as of today that this is a legitimate lie because coach was trying to invade a private space of mind that's between me and Bitcoin. It's like you have nothing to do in there, coach. You're too much, too much invasion, coach, too much information. I don't want to have to justify to an old man in the UK or the Ukraine. Uh how I, what I do with my money and holy shit was I right and so I lied I lied I told Coach Red Pill that I had only three dollars in Bitcoin <laughs> oh my god and so Zero Hedge is titling Gonzalo Lira reported dead in Ukrainian custody according to father Gonzalo Lira Sr. says his son has died at 55 in a Ukrainian prison where he was being held for the crime of criticizing Zelensky and Biden governments. Gonzalo Lira was an American citizen, but the Biden administration clearly supported his imprisonment and torture. So that is the late life of Coach Red Pill. It is not the Coach Red Pill I have known, but it was a spectacular end. And what he says about death he knew that he was going to die. Eventually, when, when, when Coach Red Pill told me his life was about to change, he sent a message on his Patreon saying, I'm about to die. And I have a, an incurable heart disease. I'm about to die. And so that is it. Uh, I'm going to try to do what I can. Um, so we... I know that everything he was doing from there was Coach Red Pill trying to do something with death, trying to accept death and accept the finitude of his being on earth and try to do the best out of it. Uh, Aquanote says, wasn't there? Yeah, yeah, Aquanote, this is exactly what I just mentioned. Uh, so that was the state. And... He he actually lived longer, and he ended up dying not even of the thing that he knew he was going to die from, which is amazing, uh, because it's the choice of die of making your death matter a little more. Uh, Coach Red Pill was faced with a time bomb on his head, and he decided to revert this to 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 not accept the state of nature revolt against it and say, I'm going to do something else with my death. And here we have Alex Rubenstein, who has uh, a copy of a handwritten note written by Coach Red Pill, apparently just before he died. <clears throat> Tell my sister, I have had a double pneumonia, both lungs, as well as pneumothorax, and a very severe case of edema, swelling of the body. All this started in mid-October, but was ignored by the prison. They only admitted I had pneumonia at the December 22nd hearing. I am about to have a procedure to reduce the edema pressure in my lungs, which is causing 
extreme shortness of breath to the point of passing out after minimal activity or even just talking for two minutes. Gonzalo. So those are the last words that we have from Gonzalo. Uh, he may have died from the edema itself or he may have died from the surgery that was meant to control the edema. Or he, and in any case, he has died from not being cared for quickly enough and not being cared for at all. He, he, he has died from the carelessness of a prison system in Ukraine that is meant to let people die. <clears throat> so that is the situation. And uh, I was looking into my old paper a few days ago, and I found this drawing that I had done of Coach Red Pill. Back in the days 2017, 2018, I was attempting to master hand drawing with charcoal. I had used my friend's Coach Red Pill video as a model. He's still the only person I have ever drawn. I found that drawing among my old papers a few days ago. That was the first person I ever attempted to draw with charcoal. I had took a random Coach Red Pill video and I had paused it at a certain, fr at a certain frame. And I still have that, uh, that piece of paper, although it's ripped uh, and everything, and it's uh, folded at some place. Uh, it does look like Coach Red Pill to me. I, um, for a first drawing, it's, uh, it's interesting how it, it does remind me of his face back then. <clears throat> so the last uh, stretch of Coach Red Pill was to turn himself into a war reporter at the front line of what is often falsely claimed to be the kind of advanced front line of Western civilization of the free world. And I believe that he has turned his death into an occasion for people to realize there is no such thing as extending Western civilization. There is no such thing as a European Ukraine. There is no such thing as because you extend the legal structures, because you extend NATO, there's no such thing as extending the ideology that is at the root of the West into other nations with other people. Ukraine is incapable of justice. Ukraine is incapable of the Western mindset. And the only extent to which there will be a relationship between the East and the West is one of drainage, parasitism, and corruption. And he, he did this demonstration by basically just standing at the front line on the Ukrainian side and rooting for Putin. Not even in an obvious way, but basically saying, haha, the Ukrainians have no chance. <laughs> Which was absolutely true. So Coach Red Pill died only because of stating the truth. That is what's so amazing. It's not like he, he took the time to truly make a geopolitical analysis that was accurate. And he died from it. He was killed uh, by a system that doesn't care about due process that doesn't care about the First Amendment. And in fact, in many ways, the whole, this whole shadowy distribution of funds from the US to Ukraine uh, is done in a way as to have a territory out there where these funds can be subject to corruption and cannot be subject to the oversight associated with the American Constitution. <coughs> And yes, uh, Rodi said, the truth that many people are repeating now, he was guilty because he said it among the first. That is all that Coach Red Pill did. He stood, he stood there eight months before anyone and said, uh, said what people were going to say in the mainstream eight months earlier or one year earlier. Uh, that is all that he's done. He's commented on He's been doing a continuous delivery of live streams that were 
aimed at demonstrating that the math just isn't there. There is no such thing as a Ukrainian counteroffensive. And thanks to him, we got to know this a little bit in advance. Because I could have reached those conclusions eventually, but Coach Red Pill gave us the earliest insight that we could possibly get on this question. And the earliest insight into the whole layer of corruption that exists under those distributions of fund. The, the ultimate reason why, why are we in a war that can only be lost? Why are we in a non-winning side all the time? That's always what happens with American wars. <clears throat> and now we know a little more of it because Coach Red Pill took the risks of being assassinated for telling those truths, for covering what are the billionaires that are, that are being uh, excluded and included into the control of current Ukraine. And what is the end game of having an actor, a Jewish actor like Zelensky, go from playing a president on TV in Ukraine, a president that in his fiction TV performance would end up tying Ukraine and Europe and then make this happen in reality, try to realize the meme that was first on TV. Coach Red Pill is still the only thinker alive, well, uh, uh, the thinkers that have commented on this situation as they were alive. He's still the only one who has given that layer of insight, that layer of insight of understanding Koyomoisky and all these, these uh, Ukrainian elites and how they relate to the current push for war and the fake calls for counteroffensive of Zelensky and why we have created this situation as Americans. So all in all, Coach Red Pill has lived a spectacular life, having a profound effect on live streaming. And I will remind, I, I will remember him as. Uh, one of the foundational pillars of modern streaming. Uh, there, is, there is not much people alive right now who I can see from here to their death realizing as much as Coach Red Pill has done. Uh, that is how important, ultimately, his contribution was. Shring Mamel sends a super chat. He says, Jeff, I will miss CRP. I started watching him sometime in 2013 or 2014 when I was in high school. I thought it was refreshing that he wasn't another skeptic slash liberals such as Shuaned or Sargon. Yes, he was the second wave of the internet that came to, <clears throat> that came to change the state of things toward a more creative, a more diverse future. A creativity that still hasn't fully reborn yet because it was part of, a, of a, a wave of thinkers who were targeted by the censorship of 2016 to 2020 and the shadow bannings. And he had himself to remake channels, to rebrand in various ways. He, he, it's rare that he was directly censored in the sense of giving strikes or banned from YouTube, but he was enough uh, targeted that he knew he had to move to other channels. And because of this, his legacy as a contribution to public thinking in an honest and fair and open way uh, has only reborn recently with the freedom that we got on X. But by the time this was back, he was truly not uh, allowed to speak because he, he had been warned on all of his official channels, including his Telegram contribution, his Twitter, that the Ukrainians were looking at what he was saying. And sometimes there were court orders keeping him from properly speaking, which is the whole essence of his demonstration. The Ukrainian world is not fit to to Western freedoms. And so anything that you do with the Ukrainians will always be a relationship with a people that is fundamentally different, that doesn't belong in Western civilization simply, and that cannot fit in it. <clears throat> uh, 
as far as my last contact with Coach Red Pill, it was on a Zoom call. And he had said, Jeff, uh, I'd like to talk to you. And uh, he called me on Zoom. And he was nervous. He was uh, worried that he was going to get arrested. He had already been arrested and then released. Um, and it was just a few days before he would get permanently arrested. Uh, maybe a week, maybe about seven days or maybe three days. I don't remember. Um, so he called me and he said, I need to talk to you. And really what I found is that he, he didn't really have anything to tell me. Uh, he just wanted to hang out and it seems that he was so nervous that he felt this compulsion of having a friend and speaking to him because he had nothing of import to tell me. Uh, I was just complimenting him on uh on the on the size of what he had started in terms of playing an important role on the Ukraine commentary, the whole Zoran Zoran appearances and the big streams that he had done. And yeah, that and he started showing me uh through the window of his hotel. And he was like, I can show this on screen, J on screen, uh, on stream, JF, but I'll show this to you. And he was showing me literally the street he was on from his hiding place because then he, he was hiding in an apartment. Yeah, not a hotel, but maybe an apartment. An apartment that he had uh, where he was thinking that he was hiding strongly enough, hidden strongly enough from the feds and the, assass the assassins that were, that were after him. Uh, and he, he had been told by the lady of that controlled one of his other apartments, hey, I just saw a bunch of mafioso looking for you. They want to kill you. Uh, so he had to run away from his initial apartment. He was in this other apartment. And I was like, uh, you know, coach, <laughs> it's not super clever to be showing me this uh, video right there because... Uh, I'm not a fed and I will never betray you. And as soon as this call ends, it will disappear from my computer. Uh, but, you know, we could be wiretapped and we probably very much are. <laughs> and he didn't seem to care. He just wanted me to show, he wanted to show me the street. Uh, he was like, oh yeah, don't worry. Uh, he was careless in his sharing of information to me. Uh, and I still don't know. Is, is that conversation what caused his arrest? Because they, ha they had been looking for him for many months. He appears in a, in a Zoom conference with me, shows me too much information. I, of course, as, a, as an ethical man, delete all of the information. But Coach Red Pill... Uh, you know, was careless, and we were on a Zoom call. It's not like we were on a Tor network on uh, on a unidentified line with layers of encryption. I was like, bro, <laughs> you know, there's a staff, there's a staff member of Zoom that's looking at us right now. Zoom is not a secure way to communicate secrets. And just a few days after he shows me this, he gets arrested. And yeah, then there was this whole ending where he actually tried a last stream as he was released from jail. And he tried a last stream fi filming himself trying to pass the border. And he ended up trying to pass the border in the Hungary direction, if I remember correctly. And uh, that, was th that was the most obvious point where... That was not a good idea to be headed there, certainly not on the main road. And he tried to present himself at the station of the official immigration forces. So it's like, you know, uh, there are ways where you can try to use forest to your advantage. Coach Red Pill didn't use the forest. He showed honorably at the, the immigration station, at the border station, and they denied his exit, and they, they throw him back in jail. They considered this was an attempt at escaping Ukraine. Uh, so yeah, you can't play the honorable path 
against a people that is fundamentally dishonorable. Uh, and, and that is what I, I retain. And I, I believe that this is what Coach Red Pill wanted to show with his death. Uh, you can't send billions of dollars to Zelensky because he tells you we're doing a counteroffensive. He's not doing it. He's going to send you some cannon fodder to, to be exploded by the Russians so that he can make the case that he's made a counteroffensive. But he's definitely not doing it for real. And you can't show up honorably at a border and ask for leaving Ukraine. You can't leave Ukraine if you've been, if you've been found to be an opposition person of the regime. In a, in a regime that is at this point a martial law regime. Uh, <clears throat> John Drake says, trying to pass the border under your own name wasn't smart. The forest is right. Yeah, uh, but to all these people, and I've seen Kurt Doolittle, among others, uh, complaining that, oh, what he did was stupid. I don't think that what he did was stupid. I think there was an aim for it. And to anyone who thinks uh, what he did was stupid, I would refer to this video, and, and I, would, I would say the best interpretation of the end of life of Coach is this. Do something like a little thought experiment, a thought experiment that I'm realizing is extremely useful. Imagine to yourself that you are going to absolutely die in, say, 10 years. Mm -hmm. from, from today's date, in exactly 10 years, you are going to be dead. Mm -hmm. and, and no illness or cancer and shit like that. You know, you're just going to be walking along and struck by lightning. And there's no place to hide, okay? Just, just to, you know, for those autists who want to say, well, what if you're indoors or in a concrete bunker? No, you know, God or the supreme being or the aliens or whoever the fuck is just going to come down and just wipe you out. Presto, done. In 10 years from right now, you're going to be dead. Now think about that. Think about what kind of life you'd want to live over the next 10 years. I mean, you know you're going to die, right? I, let's just, it just posit it. That absolutely true that in 10 years time, in, uh, you know, what is today's date? May 19th, in May 19th of uh, 2031, your brain is gonna explode and your heart is gonna burst and, and it'll be painless, but you know, that's it. You're dead. What do you do in the time you have left? So that is how he lived the rest of his life. He did something with it. He did something that made a point. He has martyrized himself, in my view. He has martyrized himself so that we would see that obviously Ukraine is not an extension of the U.S. The U.S. isn't even an extension of the U.S., as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the borders are not where you think they are. You think the borders of the U.S. are on the side of California? They're on the side of uh, freaking South Dakota. And you think the borders of the developed world is at Ukraine? The borders of the developed worlds are all circumscribed in the no-go zones of France and England. And he made a clear demonstration of this. Because in a fair society, there is this general assumption that a thinker should not be killed for his thinking, that a, go a U.S. government shouldn't fund a regime that tortures someone for thinking. And in, in a healthy society, Someone comes to the rescue of Coach Red Pill. Let us not forget that this is a regime to which Joe Biden can make one single call and say, oh, yeah, you, you're thinking about investigating these people for corruption? You won't. And they'll make it happen. And so that's all that it took. A phone call from not even Joe Biden, but maybe a staff of Joe Biden could have done it, saying, hey, you're not going to persecute Gonzalo Lira. In fact, you're going to, we're going to repatriate him immediately. And as he stands on U.S. soil, he will be protected by the First Amendment. But this didn't happen. Instead, he had to be put through a torturous process of death in jail with careless medical neglect 
And uh, if his death served to demonstrate this, then it's a demonstration that was needed. Not because we didn't know that's what would happen, but because sometimes you need to see it. And that's what a YouTuber does. It Very often our job is not is to tell people things that they already know, but to put it on the screen in a way that it's undeniable, in a way that it's unquestionable. And Gonzalo has done this throughout his life. 